Uh, chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a mega aggressive attacking game played by Hungarian chess grandmaster Judith Polgar against Indian chess grandmaster Vishwanathan Anand. The game was played in 1999 in Dos Hermanas which is a city in Spain. I have to tell you that the upcoming positions are very complex but I will try to keep the game as simple as possible without delving too deep into the jungle of endless variations. So in this game Judith Polgar was playing with the white pieces and she opened up with e4 to which Anand responded with Sicilian defense c5, knight f3 d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3 and a6 we have the neither variation, bishop e3, e6 and there it goes g4, white's idea is simple to launch a quick pawn storm on the king's side. This line is known as Pereni attack named after Hungarian international master Bela Pereni. e5 by Anand, right now we have two targets and with knight f5 white neutralized both threats. g6, g5. It may seem that with his last move white counterattacked black knight but after g takes f5 Judith Polgar recaptured on f5. So already on move 10 we have a peace sacrifice guys, a peace sacrifice against Vishwanathan Anand himself. And in here instead of moving away his knight, Anand played d5, he is eager to give up this knight but he wants to fork white pieces. Well if you play knight g8 then this is a very passive approach, white can play queen f3, can protect the pawn on f5, uh, still keeping an eye on this central d5 square and preparing castling queenside. In our game after he takes f5 we have d5 but anyways here comes queen f3. So this is a line which Bella Perini popularized and then the 7th world chess champion Mayachi Burdanidze started to acquire. Needless to say that Judith Polgar knew about all this and this was a good home preparation. d4 by Anand so we have a nice fork and in here Polgar castled queenside. Still the pieces are untouchable because we have a pin, knight bd7, black is breaking up the pin, is proceeding with the development and bishop d2. In here bishop takes d4 or even rook takes d4 are moves which are also worth of taking into consideration but in our game we have bishop d2, d takes c3, bishop takes c3. By putting the bishop on the long diagonal white will now exert a useful pressure. Bishop g7, well in 1983 in a game played between Maya Chiburdanidze and Laszlo Serna black proceeded with queen c7 so we can say that bishop g7 is a novelty by Anand. And in here still we don't see g takes f6, the knight remains hanging, rook g1 was played by Polgar. And in here instead of moving away the knight, Anand preferred safety above all and decided to castle kingside and only on move 16 we have g takes f6. I have already forgot how long was that knight hanging on f6. White manages to open up the g file, queen takes f6, queen e3. White is now threatening rook takes d7 followed by bishop takes e5, that's why Anand unpinned the bishop by playing king a8. By the way, queen takes f5 is not good because of this bishop h3. In our game we have king a8 and now it's black who has a very nasty threat, the threat is bishop h6, f4. Blocking the diagonal and refreshing rook takes d7 threat. Queen b6, which turns out to be a dubious move. Instead, it was better to strengthen the pawn on e5 by playing rook e8. But in our game, after f4, we see queen b6. Black is offering the exchange of queens, and white is rejecting the offer and is creating a mating threat. Queen h6. By playing first queen b6 and then queen h6, black lost the precious time while white put his queen on a very useful file and relying on that fact here comes rook d6. The rook is untouchable because of the checkmate and yeah black is forced to play f6. In here queen takes f6 is losing because in the end of the day you can 
get checkmate hit and then a discovered check will give white a checkmate. That's why we see f6 and bishop d2, strengthening the pawn and threatening f takes e5, e4, bishop c4, b5 and bishop e6. White proceeds with the attack. We have a nice target and it's very difficult to find good defensive moves for black. White is a piece down, but who counts pieces in this position? All that matters is an activity of white pieces. Rook a7, which is a dubious move, instead it was better to play knight c5. If bishop e3, then knight b7, for example, can be a nice move, but instead we have rook a7, which is probably the first serious mistake in this game, and now this rook will start getting harassed by aggressive white bishops. Rook c6, a5. So black pieces on the king side are totally paralyzed and black is looking for ways of activating his pieces on the queen side while white is not even giving black time for briefing. Bishop e3 attacking the rook. Rook b7 and bishop d5. The threat is rook takes c8 followed by bishop takes b7. Rook b8. And there it goes, the rook is penetrating the 7th rank. Right now the threat is bishop a7, that's why black played b4, freeing the b5 square for the rook and b3. Rook b5, bishop c6, and rook takes f5. Somehow black managed to activate his rook, but did this at the cost of allowing white to gain material equality. Rook takes c8. With this beautiful tactic, white is now managing to win a piece. Rook c5 and bishop takes f5. Well, in here, if you play a move like rook fc5, then this time, after bishop takes c8, rook takes c8, black is facing f5 move. That's why in our game we see rook cc5, keeping the pawn on f4 blocked, bishop takes f5, rook takes f5, rook d1. There it goes, white wants to penetrate the 8th rank. And now if I move like bishop f8, then anyways, rook d8 can follow. And black is like in a position of Tsuktsavank, you know, if queen g7, then queen h3. And then queen c8 can follow if you move away your rook. After rook d1, Anand played king g8, but resigned after queen g2, yes. Black is also going to lose this pawn, and once white pieces are penetrating black's camp, black can do nothing. For example, what are you going to play in here? If queen g6, then rook d8 check is coming, and then queen takes e4. If I move like rook h5, then there are many ways of achieving victory. For example, one of the possible ways is f5. If queen f7, then bishop c5. Or if I move like rook takes f5, then queen e6 is coming, queen d7. The game is over, you know. Yeah, and then here. That's why after queen g2, Anand resigned. Yeah, that was a great home preparation by Judith Polgar and a nice way of finishing up the attack. Yeah, all in all, she played the game very confidently. This is how you should play against Vishwanathan Anand. Well, this is it, dear chess lovers. Hope that you enjoyed the game. And in the end, let's also solve a chess puzzle where the task is to find the winning move for white. It's white to move. And I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Here are more suggestions for you. Feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care.